explain a few things about the culture. It's crazy. But, um, you know, I'm very grateful for your love. And it's 17 years ago, we would come to you guys about advice about marriage. <laughs> Here's six kids later, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm very grateful for the time that you took with us. And um, for everything that you do, that you radiate, what you believe in. And you try to live your life to the fullest and with that belief in God and knowing that we're here for a purpose. I admire you. I respect you. And I'm very grateful for both of you. I, uh, funny story. can't believe I'm sharing this, but very embarrassing moment a few months ago as I went and picked up a package at your house. <laughs> you all heard it. You already heard it. Oh, my gosh. You guys haven't heard it? I don't think I heard it. Oh, my gosh. I went to pick up a package, okay, and they weren't home, and they said it's in the back. So I said, okay. <clears throat> Problem was I've never noticed how they opened that gate. <laughs> so I climbed over the gate. <laughs> the most embarrassing thing was that I got the package. I was coming back out, climbing the fence over again. And I see this car driving up, and he stopped in the middle of the street, and it was dead. <laughs> Caught in the ass. Half and half. <laughs> They're like, what the heck is he doing on the fence? <laughs> that would be me. That would be me. <laughs> and I, I didn't know you had to open it this way. <laughs> but I love you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much Thank you. for... For everything you teach, and you know, like everybody said, you take the time to teach teach us every second, and I really appreciate that. And I love you guys. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a picture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you don't. Oh, <laughs> <can reenact. laughs> Let's but, go home and reenact. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <sighs> oh my oh, wow. <laughs> he must wait a yep we've been through a lot together haven't we hmm? what do you want to say hunter it's okay <laughs> Spanish one I can understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, when, when, when you think about family, um, sometimes you, um, you try to think back into the past and try to um, see how it all started. And uh, you know, I see that um, as this family grows and um, as generations go by, you notice that um, we're all one. And uh, you know. There's no doubt or disagreement about who we are, and sometimes we, we fall short, but we have family members who are there to lend us a hand and get us back up on our feet. Um, but I'm thankful for you two grandparents. You brought my dad into this world and then you brought me to your guys' family and into you guys into that into you and I'm thankful for that you guys brought me into you guys your guys' life and all of these family members here you know some of you guys
guys are probably thinking, wow, it's the boy who's crying. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes you got to show it. And it shows love and appreciation towards love it. That's all right. Your dad cried too. <laughs> <laughs> You're a special young man. You've been through some happy times and bad times, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> we got our skateboards, though, don't we? <laughs> okay. I would be horribly ungrateful if I didn't. I can uh, get my jumble feeling out verbal. <coughs> These two are my second son's parents. <laughs> I remember being picked up from school by his grandma. I remember spending every afternoon in her house, helping me with homework, laying on the tram, reading books, and being scolded for reading. <laughs> um, I remember being uh, taught how to eat. <laughs> um, but they had as much a hand in my raising as my own parents. And then when I went off to college, they graciously welcomed me into their home. They made a room for me, painted it Pepto Bismol pink. <laughs> Still is. Still is Pepto Bismol pink. <laughs> everything and nothing and got in some trouble clogged some things <laughs> <laughs> boy did we <laughs> if you want to talk about a patient patient grandpa there was no yelling I've never seen him so mad he went completely silent I thought we were dead <laughs> I thought we were dead <laughs> a whole container of slippery elm powder, slippery elm, down the kitchen sink and turn the water off. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> yep, it all came and it, we're just sitting there going, and your grandma's like, well, I don't understand. It's not going down. And grandpa walks in and goes, <laughs> and then he turns and walks away. Completely <laughs> silent. And I was like, oh boy, are we in trouble as we're unscrewing pipes trying to clean it out. <laughs> it, was, it was an adventure. But, uh, clean pipes, so. though. Yeah, they were real clean. Um, <laughs> one of my fondest memories. Well, I've got many fond ones, but one that stuck with me. I'd come over for Sunday dinner because even after I moved out of their house and I was still going to college, they graciously let me come back every Sunday. And it was just them and me. Sunday dinner, we'd go over the week. I'd help them cook, help them clean up afterwards, and then we'd just sit and talk all evening. And I came over early one Sunday, and Grandpa is sitting out on their hill. And he has a screwdriver in his hand. He's sitting on that hill. Pulling up morning glory. And he's working his way from the top of the hill, working on that morning glory. And I came over and I sat next to him. He handed me a screwdriver. <laughs> and we sat and pulled morning glory and talked. I don't even remember what we talked about, but it was just that and talked. 
So. Many times I was mistaken as their daughter, and none of us corrected. Because <coughs> you were my parents, and you still are. And I love you so much. through and you're you're raising your own kids things are hard and things are going bad to worse to worse her the whole sum of everything is the fact that I love every one of you Some of you have been, Jared, easier to raise than others. <laughs> Where are you? And I all just wish all of you liked the cows. <laughs> but I have to clarify that one story about the cow that died. The veterinarian did the... I know he did, and he got peritonitis, and I can tell you all the dins and outs. <laughs> For the first thing, you don't put a cow in a chute and then squeeze her to have a baby. <laughs> and he made that incision, and here, instead of the, here comes the rumen. <laughs> you know, the poor... I, I remember what <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so here, Linda and Bryce are trying to hold the room and we ended up had to do a ruminectomy to get everything out of the room and to get everything back in. And we finally it was about that point where Linda fell in the blood. <laughs> but the one, the cesarean that I did, yeah, we bred her back. It was all done by the book. <laughs> <laughs> I spent my last year of school at BYU Hurt just so I could open, so I could look over the shoulders of the veterinarian. And if a veterinarian came on to the place and didn't teach me something, then he wouldn't come back. He had to give me more than just service. He had to give me knowledge. But the best part of that <coughs> was Judy. I think I had a death loss on calves, 0.5, 0 0.05. If you got calf alive, Judy got him raised. We'd be dry, walking through the calf pens. She had stopped. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but. Judy can smell a bad smell mm -hmm. 10, 15 feet away and she stops for that calf stick. When we got to the house, I'd have to have the calf treated. But I want to thank Judy. She's willing to live on what I brought home. Yes, we were there in Logan. She brought more money in on the sewing machine than I brought in the house. She made do with what I brought. I think.
You kids have blessed me very much. Thank you. You may be expecting like some kind of gadget or whatever from my side, but no. You can't. You don't have to keep this because apparently you said to me that you had a lot of those in your garden. But one memory that I had is I don't remember if my mom sent me over or we already there but probably like I guess we're doing today we're weeding your garden and it was just you and me were weeding and you were telling you were coming up with one of your stories about how when God made the earth he put a lot of rocks in Springville and then he told me <laughs> what you don't want to listen to this? <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> but he told me that I was to live in Springville and take care of the rocks and get rid of them. <laughs> and so that was our job, was to get rid of the rocks and remove the rock population in Springville. <laughs> so moral of the story is, as everybody else has said, we've all learned hard work. We've learned family. We've learned service, and we've lo learned love from you. So that's my. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> There's your rock here. Don't take it back to Springville. <laughs> you want to take it home? No. <coughs> All right. So, being the only redhead, uh, I was truly blessed to have that privilege of being the only redhead. Um, and so as I am aware of, you know, of things on my body or freckles, well, Grandpa also noticed those freckles. And he had a special freckle that he would, would pet on a regular basis whenever I would come over. <laughs> and so I would come over and I would expect Grandpa to pet my freckles. <laughs> and so I was ready whenever he was there to pet my freckles. Where is this freckle located? <laughs> right here. Right here in the middle. <laughs> it's kind of combined with all the other freckles. <laughs> but Grandpa had a special freckle that I knew could not get sunburned or anything happened to it. And so I knew that Grandpa had a special place in my heart because he cared about my freckles. <laughs> 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 oh, guys. <coughs> oh. Alex, come here. <laughs> well, you, got, you got someone behind you. Oh. Gotta probably say something for her. But when I was younger, I had a lot of health problems, and I remember my parents were always freaking out. So as I grew older, I realized that it wasn't just my parents that were right there, it was you two. It was you two that were standing right there, always watching over me as I came to think of it as you were one of my, both of you guys were my guardian angels, watching over me. And it gave me a sense that I had a bigger purpose. And the lessons I've learned from both of you have helped me become better. So I want to thank you for sacrificing your time and to raise my father. So thank you. Tell him what problem you did have. <coughs> what? I had a baby. acid reflex, uh, heart stopped, 
My mom had to perform CPR on me, what, twice? Uh, I had so many. Um, she had a monitor. <coughs> um, what else and did I have? And when you stopped breathing, your monitor would go off. We all took turns laying on the floor when you were asleep watching that. And you know, some nights I can still hear that monitor go off. And I thought, what am I supposed to do? I don't know where the button is. <laughs> but I can still hear that thing go off. And we, it just took all of us to keep you alive, bud. <laughs> oh. So you're a good young man. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you. Your father's still not raised. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm one of the few lucky grandkids that live in the same city as Grandma and Grandpa. And I was able to bring many clothes up to Grandma and Hen, whether that be the pants I'm wearing now, or my prom dress, or a bunch of other stuff. Um, and she is always right there to fix stuff, just like Grandpa's right there to fix houses. I have a working bathroom because of him, and a functional kitchen because he was there mudding the walls and putting in the nails and helping us with everything. Um, I remember when they first started the entire Christmas expedition that takes place in front of their yard. Um, I went over to help him paint the manger, and I don't know what what went through his head to let me paint half of it by myself. I'm sure he went through after and like repainted it all and found all my mistakes. He never told me that I messed up though. He trusted me enough that he built it and I was gonna paint paint it with him. Um, I have a few freckle stories. You were lucky that you got to keep yours. <laughs> Grandpa would give me a quarter and like point to all the freckles and be like, this one's mine, here's a quarter for it. And it would always disappear in their couch. I never got to keep any of those quarters. <laughs> they somehow always stayed in the house. <laughs> and it, I didn't take them back. <laughs> I sure didn't get them. <laughs> Um, we better look in the couch. <laughs> whether, whether my freckles disappeared due to all the third degree sunburns or just because Grandpa was buying all of them, I don't have any left. <laughs> but um, I remember several times after junior high, I would go up and wait until my mom or dad got off of work and you guys would watch me and Grandma would make her potato soup or her porcupine meatballs. And Grandpa was always right there to just talk to me about school and stuff that I was struggling with. And um, we went on car rides. And we uh, I think it was a few jobs ago. But you would always tell when Grandpa wasn't paying attention as well, because he'd get over into the skid marks of the road and jerk us right back onto the road to make sure we were safe. And I remember feeling so comfortable inside of that car because I knew that I was with Grandma and Grandpa and that I was going to be safe, whether he drifted off the road or not. <laughs> um, I am very grateful to have grandma and grandpa in my life and all the advice that they've given me and how much they haven't ever given up on me so thank you <laughs> there's not a lot I have to say um I just, there's one saying he always said to me um, when I, a couple of years ago, I was struggling 
few things and um, one thing that always runs through my head nowadays that whenever I'm about to make a bad decision or may do something really stupid that I'm going to regret, um, something that grandpa has always um, tried to help me with is um, keep your nose clean. And, um, <coughs> The amount of times that that saying has gone through my head, as of Grandpa's always saying, Alex, keep your nose clean. And that's kept me on the straight and narrow path and um, kept me where I am today and keep me pushing to my, to my goals. So um, I just want to say thank you for everything. Everything you've done, everything you and Grandma have done for me and helped me through all my hard times. So, thank you. I can just awesome. promise you all that there will still be hard times. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I can promise you. <laughs> Life is hard at the best. It's supposed to be for some reason. A wise man once said there needs to be opposition in all things. And I wonder, wonder why. True. Guys, amen. You're not done. <laughs> oh, Miss Shirley. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just really emotional. Um, Does that mean you're pregnant? So, um, hey, okay. so one of my favorite memories of Grandpa was when we were living in our Orem house, and I was not a clean or tidy kid. <laughs> we all know no. that. <laughs> what? <laughs> And I remember one day I was just playing in my room, and Grandpa had come in for a surprise visit. And I was like, oh no, my room is so messy. And I remember him walking in and just looking at all my mess. And then he walks to the corner of my room, and he picks up my scriptures that had been knocked off of my dresser. And he picked them up, and he uncrinkled all the pages. And he kind of got down to my eye level, and he said, Shelly, I don't care that your drawers aren't pushed in. I don't care that your bed isn't made. I don't care how messy your room is, but I care about this book. And this book is important to me, and we need to treat the things that are important to us better than putting them on our floor. And... I think that's one of my favorite memories because since that day, I have been able to watch Grandpa and watch how he takes care of the things that are important to him. Those things like the gospel, the way that he would gather us all every fast Sunday for family home evening because that was important to him and all the conversations that I've had with him before my mission and before getting married and before becoming a mom. And grandma is the next thing that is very important to him because of the way that he takes care of grandma and how I've watched him get all the doors for grandma when they go somewhere or I've watched them hold hands as they walk down the road or the stories that I've heard of when Grandma's in the hospital and he refuses to leave her bedside. And all of us are the next thing that's important to Grandpa because all these stories that we are sharing, because he takes the time to talk to us in the service and to be with us. So that's my favorite memory. Yeah. Happy birthday. <coughs> All of our drawers are pushed in now, by the way. Pushing <laughs> 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 all the dresser drawers. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier to hide stuff that way. <laughs> oh dear.
Oh, I, I, I think we had an, a, yeah, right. one more, or at least another one. Yeah. I'm not much of a talker. Okay, just like my dad. <laughs> um, well, um, so you guys know that we've been, that I've been to your house twice for several reasons. Oh. And yes, I'm not the only queen, I'm not queen either. <laughs> Oh, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> None of us were. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's getting better, right? Back, dog. <laughs> 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 Shush. Shush. I'm getting better at it, though. Um, well, you guys taught me a lot. Um, yeah. um, you guys taught me um, to work really hard. Oh. Sometimes I'm not a hard worker, like I should be. Um, I have lots of memories of you guys, I still do, and I love going to your guys' house, and um, I'm trying to think of a special memory. I think one time, um, I got in trouble for something, I think it was for my grades, again. Well, um, you guys really told me that grades are everything and that it will get me to what I need to be when I get older. And I'm still trying to figure that out. And I still have that talk in my mind. The talk that you guys gave me. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're so good. That was great. And you can even ride your bike now, can't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I didn't grow up as close to you guys as I guess I would have liked, but I do love you guys. And, uh, before the keep your nose clean part, there was always a hug <laughs> and a talk walking somewhere, and I always remember you whistling, and uh, I always felt your love and learning so much from Grandma about, like, um, <laughs> making cross-stitch and picking up trash on the streets, telling me to keep the world clean, so I love you guys for that, and always tell me, happy birthday. Thank you. Have you later. Did you know that all my grandkids are great? <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you very much. I think someplace in the Bible it says, uh, Blessed is he that has a lot of children or arrows. Has this quiverful. Something is a quiverful. He never said that. A few years. Yeah, I mean, mom says. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, before I make a special request, I want to clarify that those of you that would like to join us, we're going to go to Springville after and here. And, <laughs> and weed. And what? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not. Yeah. We don't have anything to win. That's not what I heard. A little birdie told me you could use some more. And it's Saturday. What else would we do? Go home and play baseball. Go fishing. Play the No. Mark, is this little bird you? <laughs> no. We're fine. You know, we know you're going to say that, but just let us do it. There's get... nothing to do. Okay. You want to clean up dog poop? You know what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Mark says there's something to do. There's something to do. Mark. <laughs> what? There's a lot to do. Is there really? Mark's going to Your be the peony supervisor. Your areas are boxes, all those. <laughs> Let us you all just quickly. where they're at. 
bring your screwdriver for the morning glory. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I have two dandelion poppers. To be honest, one.